Eastleigh is a very inclusive and diverse community. We have over 67 languages spoken and we have a larger than average number of students on the SEN register, approximately 17% of the population. We also have an on-site resource provision for 15 students with a complex needs learning profile and we have around 20 other students that qualify for high needs funding. We are in an area of deprivation so we have a large number of students that are in receipt of free school meals and obviously the pupil premium funding as well. At Eastley we believe in inclusion, we've got a long history of inclusion and we believe that it's something that you have to do every day so you can't choose to be inclusive part of the time. And so that means every student is part of whole school systems whether that's be for the pastoral system, teaching and learning um, or extracurricular provision. The school embraces inclusion you know, as, as, as much as it possibly can. I think you know the, the perfect society is an inclusive society and a lot of the issues that we have in the world today arise from that lack of tolerance, lack of understanding. Putting the children in an inclusive situation is, is the way to go because they, then they are accepting, they, they've just got friends, you know, they don't see the disabilities or, and, and vice versa. So it breaks down all those barriers. You know, the students have some real challenges. If you're building a new school, it would be a lot easier because you could design it into it. And you could, you know, some of these old corridors and things like that are not very accessible, stairways and things. So as far as possible, we try and make it as accessible as possible. I like being in ESP because, like, in other schools, it's very hard to go around the school and it's not very accessible for me. But this school, they look at what I need and what I'm struggling with, with like physical needs and stuff. The school bought this for wheelchair users to use the sewing machine. In science, they adjust the table with a knob, put it down or up. In maths, if the table is too near to the door, they move it. In IT, they make sure that there's a special spot for you to sit. We can lower this table up or down. Then he should be able to be pushed under the table as far as we go and he's got access to whatever's on the table. I like being at Eastley. It's a very good school. Um, they treat you equally. They don't differentiate you. They treat you like one and like a family. We have three hygiene rooms that have overhead hoists one sort of like either end of the school and one more central and for access for students that would be able to transfer themselves or would need portable hoisting within other areas of the school there's hygiene rooms also. Actually the benefit for the students is that if they needed personal care to happen they wouldn't have to come to one central area so personal care can happen sort of like within different areas across the school which would then limit the time that they spent out of their classroom. Inclusive teaching is difficult. We have worked very hard over the last few years to make sure that teachers have a shared understanding of what we mean by inclusive teaching. Uh, but we do recognise that current teacher training um, it doesn't necessarily equip teachers with the skills that they need to be able to work in a school like Eastleigh that has the range of needs. So it's something that we have to support people with internally. Three years ago, change the structure of the inclusion department because we recognised that we needed to have internal expertise. If you're reliant on referrals to external providers this can be quite slow so we wanted to have as much skills um, and expertise in-house as we could um, and so we've now got teachers and a complex need teacher in particular that is a whole school resource so part of that person's remit is to support colleagues in differentiating their subject curriculum to moderate assessments when the assessments are not following national assessment criteria and again we have a sh we've developed a shared understanding of what that looks like. The way we personalise at Eastley is by going for example to the subject scheme of work for example English and we personalise the activity according with what they teach 
rather than offer an alternative. And we do the same for science. So based on their activities, based on their subject, we personalize this according to the level of needs that we need for our students to uh, be accessible. Well, I think the first thing that we need to think about is the access arrangements. So the way that you set your room up. So where are they going to sit? Are you going to sit them near the door? Are you going to sit near some of the other students? If there's a group work, who are they going to work with? Is the table the right height? Have you accommodated their site needs? Whatever it is that needs to be taken into account. So that's, that's one of the first things that you must consider. And then after that, about planning specific work for them. How are you going to differentiate what everyone else is doing? Are there parts of the lesson they can join in with everyone? Are there bits of the lessons where they're going to have to go and do something that's slightly different because that's what's best for them? So those are all the kind of things that you really need to take into account before you start teaching some of the students that we have. We approach the, the teachers, we approach the, the head of that curriculum to say no. So for example, last term they were doing um, a Christmas carol. So it's asking the head, head of English, you know, what, what has been planned for our children? What is going to be adapted? So it's a case we'll work alongside you. So it's doing some, some tactile things. The children made a picture book with the different scenes from A Christmas Carol. So that we're doing something specific. So there is learning objectives for the children. It's not a case of just going into a classroom, doing something with, with, with some art material, and it's kind of purposeless. We, there is purpose to what we're doing, and we do see improvements with our children. For example, the children we had last year in Year 11, she had the highest level in BTEC that apparently any, any other Year 11 children had before within the SEN department. Sometimes, this, because the teachers didn't know what the students were capable of or what their level was, I think there was a barrier there. And that, because we've got the teachers to know the students, and because we know the students, we, we pass the information on, that barrier sort of disappeared. Take, for instance, our science lesson. And the teacher liaises with us to get materials that we need, resources that we need. Like at the moment, we're doing rocks, so she's got a big display box with different rocks and sand and things in, in, in that. But that's through liaising with us. Oh, you like that one better. Well, you have to differentiate to the level of their need. Um, it's very important, the planning. Planning is very important. You need to make sure that um, you liaise with the TAs so that you know exactly um, what level of engagement for every pupil. We also use a, a tracking system called B squared, whereby we track the assessments. So we do the, the planning is based on the, um, the tracking of their, their skills. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Teaching assistants aren't always subject specialists. It can be difficult to make sure that they understand what it is that you're trying to get the students to to access. So the way around that is that um, we, we worked as a department, all of the subject specialists, to plan the differentiated work that matches the scheme of work that the other students are doing, which is provided to the teaching assistants before they come in. And it's available for anyone to see on our humanities department area on the shared site. And then talking to the teaching assistants when they're in the classroom, but also in advance and saying, you know, this is what we're aiming for, this is what that we'd like them to achieve. Do you think this is the right level for them? Can we make it a bit different? What is it that I need to be able to do for them to access it? Father's doing on the table, he put down which one is less and which one is more. So he counts and then divides which one is more and which one is less. So he's doing really well at the moment. He's progressing. Is this more? Than this. Can you give me this number? Which one is bigger? Two or three? Three is bigger. So can you say three? Fourteen. Which one? Which one is more? More flowers here. Which one? Can you cut? Can you give me on your board? That's how they are doing um, using the number line to apply it with negative numbers and positive numbers as well. One, seven, plus three. Can you find minus seven on the number line? Where's minus seven? Forward. Good, forward. One, two, three. So minus seven plus three equals minus four. She's actually making progress because when she started, she started on the um, lower level, P skill. Uh, level five, and now she's gone up to level one. So she's gone up four level now, and then she's doing ten minutes work now. 
later on we're gonna give her a reward 10 minutes music because she likes music we'll give her the ipad she's gonna listen to music and then afterwards she's gonna do her work again what comes after two? Eight. Three. Good boy. Eight. 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 What comes after three? Four. Yeah. After four? What comes after six? Oh. Good boy. Eight. Well done. Nine. Well, give me high five. Nine. Good boy. Year nine, we do offer a directed pathway for the social development, and we we have from personal progress level for again very complex learning needs students to level one, and we make sure they they can be entered for an award, for a certificate, for a diploma, and we just make sure that they achieve the credit level that enable them to get an accreditation at the end of a year 11, which is externally verified as well. And we are going through the same process. Uh, we, we've got the course, and then we adapt it and we personalise it at their level. Oh, every job. Oh, every job's gone. Is there any more left? There's a programme that we use, for, um, it called Earwig, where we put all the kids' pictures and then we write reviews on them. But what you do, you upload a picture, but you do new record. Yeah, we do it for English, all their lessons basically, and we do it so we've got evidence. Because if anyone can do write-ups and put whatever they want in it. If you haven't got the evidence, you don't know if it's true or not. So we do this so you can say, okay, yep, yeah, they actually do this. The way I see it um, as a professional is not only educating our students, but educating others. And by saying that to accept, integrate and work alongside others. So that is important for the future planning of the parents, for the future planning of the child. And we do cater for their needs. So we work with the multi-agency professional teams, with the physiotherapist, with the speech and language therapist, with the occupational therapist, and we have regular meetings in order to discuss, meet, plan, assess, evaluate and monitor. Thomas uses this device with a program called the Grid3. It's got lots of pictures and words and he navigates through it um, and it helps him talk because he doesn't have a voice. Um, mm. Thomas can say yes and no. Mm. And so at the moment we navigate for him, but what we would like in the future is maybe to check whether mm. he can use it independently um, using his eyes. We're going to have a few appointments to check whether um, his, his, he can point at the screen using his eyes. The screen will read where he's looking and it will be able to talk for him so that he doesn't need me to talk for him. Is it in the fourth column? It is in the fourth column. All right, is it about dancing? Is it about laughing? Is it washing? You love talking about washing. <laughs> right. Is it about games? <laughs> All right. You want to play games? Do you want to play games right now? We're at school. This isn't where we play games. <laughs> we offer the same equal opportunities for all of them. In year 10, for example, we've got work experience and our students attend the two weeks placement for work experience. Again, we make sure that is personalized to their level. Uh, we offer one-to-one -one support for these two weeks. We try to meet the business working hours and we do the same thing. So we have the same approach like for any other student. They attend all their core subjects, they attend options, and that's with the mainstream students as well. They go to their mentors, like any other student. They go to the dinner hall to have their lunch. Lunch break is outside in the playground, break time in the playground. So um, they are part of any educational visit. So most of the time they are with their peers. We 
do through termly meetings with parents and students get their views so we review the support that's in place and, and we make any changes. Again we ask the young people so the, the students on our register for physical disability uh, they actually opted to have less adult support um, but they did identify which lessons they, they felt they still did need adult assistance because it was about physical access in, in the more practical lessons. When we came to Eastleigh, it was Zinat met Nahima first and it was kind of like an instant click and then later Ilham also moved to our class and we all just naturally got along. Well, in primary we didn't know, um, well I didn't know much about um, people with disabilities. So when I came to Eastleigh and I met Ilham, I realised that um, even if you have a disability, it doesn't mean that you're any less compared to people. Like Ilham was in set one, which for a lot of people was like unexpected because she was the only wheelchair user or someone with a disability in top set. I think I'm the closest to her out of all my friends because like uh, we have the most in common. She always had an assistant with her because they thought she needed help. But in this school, they actually let her settle in first and then whoever she wanted to help her would help her like um, most of the time me or Anika or someone would go with her in the lift so a TA doesn't have to stay with her and her stuff like um, her school supplies we would put it away which I don't think in every school you get that opportunity like normally they think that they're less able than they are so they always have to have a teacher. I feel like Ilham finds it more comfortable the thing when there's friends rather than teachers around here because it's more easier for her to open up. I think the inclusive approach works at Eastley. I also think that they're included in society in a way that they just wouldn't be if they were attending a special educational needs school where they're just separate and they often that I think that they probably wouldn't meet anyone else outside of that school in their daily lives maybe between home and school there's, there's not really that many other places they're going. So one of the big things here is that they get a lot of interaction with other people from around, around the school. And that benefits those people as well because you know, they're becoming more tolerant, they're understanding needs of others much more. I just think it's a much better way of running a school. It makes me feel like part of you know, this bond that I have with them, not only them but other people, but that our bond is special because like, we've known each other for a long time. I'm proud of what we've done together was revising as well, because something we both, us three have a strategy, like if someone doesn't understand something, we share with each other, so then we find a method so we all understand it. For example, it could be short words, so we all understand something like the same thing, so then when it comes to the test, none of us struggle. If we don't understand something, then we, we try to help each other. And I think we got that from last year because we had a teacher called Mr. Giddy in science. And he taught us that you're not only here to help yourself, you're here to help each other. You know, education is about educating the whole child and it's very important that all children are measured on progress, whatever that progress is. But the systems that we have to measure that progress should reflect the starting point of the child. And if it is very needy, it should reflect that. And I don't think we have that system yet. Politically, you know, that's a whole different ball game with, with progress aid and the way that pupils are judged. And I think the government could, could really look at that. Uh, the DfE, they need to look at the way that they hold. It's right to hold everybody accountable and the progress, no matter what the starting point, is the right way to go. But I think there needs to be some caveats there for students that have real serious disabilities. I, I would say to other schools that you can, and I would also say to the Department of Education, as I have done, that the, the problem is not people's willingness, the problem is at the moment is the system, the accountability system that we're in, does not recognise or reward schools for the, the work that they do in inclusion. In fact, almost all the measures that you're measured against um, actively discourage you, in my opinion.